All right, welcome aboard, ladies and gents. If you're new to the channel, I'm Mick. I'm Daryl. And in this episode, we're going to just show you how a uh, car has a bit of weight reduction. Yeah, the and, old metal maggots. <laughs> and They've that one's had a, uh, a bit of serious weight reduction on the end of that sill. Yeah. So that's the front half of the left-hand sill. And the reason being, obviously, you can see there the rust and also this beautiful repair that it's had some point of its sketchy, life. Sketchy, sketchy. I've decided that's got to go. So I've taken that front half of that sill off. And I've been a little bit, um, how would you say, forceful removing that sill, but I'm mm. going to show you how and why I've done that and the, uh, the end result of the rest of the car where I've taken that off. But there's a way to do it, and the reason why I've done it, I'll explain that as we go. Yes, that's all right, Pops. So we'll get stuck into this episode, but that is one sketchy repair. Oh, come and, on, mate, uh, that's a bit of quality. It's funny when people say, I'll save some money and, and do it like that. The, the real deal is in Australia, that's uh, not roadworthy, so that's pretty sketchy work. So we're just uh, showing what it is and how to do it the right way. So so that one will be over the left shoulder in, gone. In the bin and replace it with something. Or well, that can be a souvenir, that one. Hang it on the wall. Actually, we'll, we'll give it to Matt. Matt can hang, that, hang it on the wall. No, we better not. Poor Bug will have nightmares when he sees that. <laughs> I want to try and achieve that taking that sill off that um, inner floor pan there. I'm trying this tool out. We just bought it. It's supposed to be the ants' pants as a little spot weld cutter, but I've had a bit of a play here with it, and it's supposed to be able to snip through those spots pretty good, but it's kind of doing the job, but it's not. As you can see there, it's not actually going through the spot. It's tending to want to go around it and chop the old skin off. It's kind of working. Getting through it a bit there, that one, but I think... There we go, that one's off, those couple are off there. So I think what it's going to be a combo with this thing, I haven't used it before, is work from side to side. But the way you can do it is with some of the spot welds, especially in areas like this, if you don't want to go along and drill everything, if you've got a real nice tool to chop those spots off, if you hold it just right, you can get it in exact right spot and just give it one good clout and it'll just chop those spots off. And it's a really quick way to get those panels off. But you want to be careful not to damage the inner one. But if you get it on a flow with it, you can just go along and just whack, whack, whack each spot. And before you know it, that panel will be off. And that's why I'm just trying this one. I, I don't know, like I said, I haven't used it before, but apparently they're supposed to be more, not a bad thing, but I'll, I'll um, play with it and little bit more and see what I think of it. But um, I had a really nice one that I made myself out of an old leaf spring, worked a treat. This one's got a little bit of a scallop there and it's made to go, once you get inside that the two skins, it's made to go like that. You can see there it's chopping through that bottom skin there. But what I'd have to do then is come along, trim that up a bit more, and then grind those little excess pieces off. So I don't know, I think um, it's probably okay, but uh, the one I had was just a tad better. But it's sort of achieving the result there, so I'll just keep playing with this and see what I think about it. Just knock all that paint off there, she's got such a build up, and try and get down between those two skins. But I see how the principle of it, you can kind of work two ways with it. Unfortunately, it just doesn't seem to have the, um, the cutting that I would like it to have. If you hit those spots just right, if you've got a good tool, you can just get it through them really quick. It saves drilling, and if you, if you want to go this way, it's fine, but you've got to be careful not to, to wreck your inner skin and it's just a quicker way than drilling all your spots off. So I'll just try it for a bit, like I said, and see what I think. But yeah, I think little by little, um, it's probably gonna work. There's another one off, so there's one, two, three there pretty quickly, so once I get that off, then I can come along and just dolly that back up. So I might just persevere with this and see how it goes.
know, it's just too soft, that's blunt already, that thing. It works, but it doesn't, unfortunately. blunt already shells to the end there yeah you can see it's marked it everywhere already just too just soft put the end up to the camera so we can see it turn it around yeah it's Might already need sharpening yeah but you know it's only done half like three or four spots that if it's if the steel's any good yeah. it's look like good quality Japanese knives that you'll just stay hard that's just yeah anyway it is what it is Well, to be honest, the old hammer here, it is good for something. It does chop spot welds off and it also hits you on the head quite nastily. It but does. Hey, you know what, everyone? Pops has got a new name. It's not going to be Pops anymore from this episode. It's Daryl the Hammer. Oh, wow. <laughs> yep. N known as the Hammer forevermore. <laughs> That's and there it is, the Darryl offending the hammer. hammer. Not And your brothers. From other mothers with Mark Hammer Dixon now, what can I say? Mate, what, yeah, what can you say? He got hit with a hammer and now you've been hit with a hammer, so that's it, Pop. Sure, now Daryl the Hammer. Damn. <laughs> There's no more Pops, it's just Daryl the Hammer. So, all right, while, while I'm attacking this, the reason I'm into this sill, if you come down here, you can have a good look at it. It's eaten right out. The bee's nest. The bee's nest, or, yeah, pretty much the white ants nest or was, and they've chopped this out back in the day, slapped that dirty big old patch in under there, and haven't even bothered to fill this end piece in. So I'm gonna go through here, take it off there, round those spots, come back down to about there roughly, and I'll take that piece away, because it's fairly well pinholed underneath and thin. So what I'll do is have a look inside right up that sill, once I've got this window part off, and decide whether I wanna go right back here or not. If I don't have to, I won't. I'll only chop away what's needed. So at this stage, the plan is to come back to there, have a little look, see, and if, if I'm happy with what I see up inside there, I'll leave it. If not, that'll have to go too, but yeah. Daryl the hammer's back to it. Daryl the hammer, mate. All right, Pops, well, Bugger. you'll still be Pops, but for now on, I think you're gonna be labeled as Daryl the hammer. Just don't call me Hammerhead, all right? Daryl, AKA the hammer. So that's got that off. I've chopped that, gone along there, 10 minutes, and just chopped that outer skin off. And as you can see there, there's a couple little beads left on there from the spots. But once I then come back across when this is gone, and I'll dolly this inner floor pan skin really nice and straight, clean all this up, freshen it all up on that inner part to where it's going to accept the, uh, the new sill. But like I was saying earlier with these spot weld tools, if you've got a good one, um, and I'm not really sure these days where you can source a real nice one. I generally make stuff myself, but we thought we'd try this one. We didn't know what they were like. But it's done the job there in a, in a sort of a fashion. It's taken me 10 minutes just to chop that off. So now I'll come around here, I'll come down this front edge of it and come right back up and meet it back up through there and just throw that piece away. But um, yeah, it's kind of done a job. It's got it off, but uh, it's 
the difference between if you want to spend the time and drill the spots out or just go ahead like this and just chop them all off. But um, if you get good at it and you've got the right tool, i found in the past, especially when I used to do heaps and heaps of crash work, if you want to get a skirt off or a sill off, you just start somewhere, put your tool in, and just as quick as that, one hit, one spot, basically, when everything's running right and you're in the groove with it, you just whack, 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 and as quick as that, that panel's off, you dolly up your remainder of what you're going to use, new panel goes on after you've done all your repairs. But this thing, yeah, I, it's kind of doing the job. I'll persevere with it and play with it and see what I think. I might give it a little sharpen up. But, um, yeah, as, as easy as that, as quick as that, that's, that's all you've got to do. And it saves a lot of time, whereas if you go and you drill them out, you've got to mark everything, you've got to centre punch, drill, and then sometimes you have the issue where you tend to drill through a little bit. This way, if you've got a nice tool to chop them off, you don't do that. You might have a few little buttons left just to clean up. And then when you put your two skins together, when you're putting the new bit on, you haven't got the, the inner hole to deal with. You've just got your outer one, which you, you're welding up. But that's just another way of doing it. But I really prefer the old school way. Just chop them off if you've got a good tool. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do, I've had a look at this thing. I think I'll take it and sharpen that point up, get it really nice and fine there. Because these two skins, this door pillar, the outer one as on that inner skirt there, when they're spotted or on back in the day, that's really done a nice job there. That's pulled those two skins perfectly together down through there. So the way this thing is at the moment, not quite nice enough just to poke and, and tap in between those to open them up so I can get in there to chop those spots off. So I think what I'll do, I'll go and sharpen this up and just see if it's going to make any difference to this. Hopefully it will. Um, but like I said, I'm just experimenting with this thing at the moment. But if that works, and I can just snip them off as nice as that and quickly without pushing this inner one in, and that's what I don't want to do. I just want to be able to get that inside those two skins, a couple of nice cracks, chop those spots off, move down, and I can come in underneath the bottom one, same deal in under there. I'll open that up and I'll come back and get it off. So I'll go and sharpen this up and see how we go. Right, I'll give this a bit of a, a uh, touch up here on the little um, bench grinder. This is a little baby. Don't want to use the big one for this, so we'll see how we go. You're doing things like this, same old story, don't overheat the steel. Try to work with the grain and, and the right angle on, the, on that particular bit of steel. Nice little feather there. You just got to be very careful with this stuff because if it's a bit soft, the steel, you'll, um, you'll undo what you're supposed to do real quick. Get that done. Now we'll try this little bevel around this edge here, see if I can get a little bit on that. side. I'm going to try and get a bit of a point on that hooky part so I can get it into awkward little corners. try that and see what it does. Now what I intend to do is cut, I've done one cut through there and when I made this piece up in the past I put that bit in and I did weld it through there. I got ahead of myself a little bit, I joined it back onto that old seal. I wasn't really sure where I was going to chop this but I've made the decision I'm going to go through there obviously, come right across. So I need to tuck in underneath these little spots here. See if I can get in there without pushing that panel too far away. Like I said, they've been really, really welded, spotted together perfectly there, but that's going in the right direction for me at the moment. Just 
don't want to chop through that inner one. Just trying to pull that apart a little bit, gently, gently. It's good the way it's going there at the minute. Yeah, we'll see if we can get in under that. Yep, let's snip that off nicely in under there, beautiful. Excellent, it's coming off good. I can see through there, through that on the inner side of that skin that's come off. Sharpening that, that little bit has helped that. You'd think a bloke would take that wheel off out of the way, wouldn't you? And take the air wheel out, mate. Yeah, well, anyway. That will happen eventually. That's coming off there pretty good, so I'll go down a bit lower. Hey, do you want my trusty chisel? Uh, no, I'm good, mate. Thanks with this one. I've made friends with this one now. I'm getting to know it. It's going in under there nicely at the moment. Just taking those welds off. I might, might have spoke too soon, that mightn't be a bad tool after all. A little bit of a sharpen up does wonders. That one's a bit tougher. from that top edge. I might just try and cut this little piece away here and then grind that button off. That way I won't damage the inner piece. I think it might be easier to get the old drill out pops with this one. Okay, before I get too excited, I thought I'd be just grab this sill and um, just sit it up against the car there and make sure I'm not chopping away too much. They don't give you a hell of a lot. That's if it wants to come out of the box, that is. Well, it doesn't want to part company. Right, uh, so I just want to check heights here before I go ahead and get too excited with all this. And I'll have a look, see if I've got enough meat there. So basically that's the length, they give you that much. So put that whole sill section in and I'll just see how far I need go with the rust repair on this, how far back, whether it's right back full extent or if I've got to come to here or wherever. But I just wanted to check this height here to make sure that I haven't cut it too proud or too short. But yeah, I've got plenty of meat there. So I'll continue on that cut that I've got there. I'll bring it right around to the front there. It'll be interesting to see what they're like, these things, once we go to, to get serious and uh, sit it up and see what the fit up's actually gonna be like with the door and everything. But looking inside them, they're fairly solid. They've got a bit of meat to them. So it'd be nice if the pressings are good and they actually line up. It's things like here, where once, that on, when, once that's on the car and the actual bottom edge of that guard has to match around that, just to see what it's really, really like. But um, that'll be a whole lot of fun if it doesn't fit. There'll be some more rework. But that'll go on there basically like that. And what I'm talking about is that there. And where, what it gets down to is the position of this line to here as opposed to this to here. And I don't know, we'll see um, how good they've got these for distance or not. All that sort of stuff comes into it because when it's on, your guard obviously, the back edge comes down there and it tucks in along that line and goes in onto the bottom of that sill. But it'll be very interesting. I hope they're good, that's all. Anyway, 
let's um, solve my little mystery with this so I've got plenty here to play with. So I'll just keep hacking away and get this piece off. Okay, so underneath here, the reason why you can see why I'm getting rid of all this, but back in the day they just, I don't know, big nasty hole there, it looks like the rats chewed it off and they sort of bird shitted it all on. But here you can see the remainder of a pop rivet even. But this bit here was just, I don't know how they've managed to shove that down inside the sill, but didn't even bother to put anything on the end of it right there. It was just left gaping great hole. But hang on a minute, what the hell is that hanging out of there? That's, as I've tapped that, it's fell down out through there. What the hell? That, that's a, um, that's a bloody old uh, boot lace or a shoe lace. Wow, that's different. Wonder how that's got in there. Man, you never know what you're going to find. But that's come from somewhere up in there. But what I want to do now is I'll tap this bottom lip across so I can get my spot weld cutter down in between those two skins and I'll come back to about there with it and get rid of that piece. So that's what I'll do now. I'll just hammer this back bit by bit. Bend that back a little bit more just there. Bit of access to it. It can be a little bit rough doing this, this side of it, because it's only going to go in the bin. I don't know if you're too pedantic with this. Don't want to go over the top, don't be stupid about it. So I have to still work with what's here on that inner skin. But you kind of got to know when to, to get a bit excited and not with this stuff. Let's see how this goes. Whether we're going to be able to do the job or not. bit by bit, get this out of the way. What I'll do, I'll, I'll go one way with this to open it up nicely, then I think I'll come back the other way. Get rid of those spots. Mate, who knows, needs to go to the gym when you're doing this? Looks like it's going to start to work its way off there for me, bit by bit. Move my light. Try and get in under there where it's out of the way and I can see. Somewhere there.
cutting this outer sill off here, as you can see. I don't want to go too deep because I've got an inner support in under this. Uh, this section, I, I don't know if you guys have seen, way back I welded this right in this whole piece. It was, it was just absolute rubbish, this bit. And so I've got to be very careful because in behind that, you've got that inner support. You can see that I've just started to go through that outer skin. And then what I'll do, I'll come across, I'll come slightly down and then into the car because what I'm trying to do is create a stagger join here for strength. I don't, don't want to just lop it off. So we'll go very carefully here and, and not to touch that inner one, hopefully. much further I'll try and just give that a bit of a break off but now I'll come down here and take this little corner off that stagger that I'm doing there, it's very important for strength and that's what you should always do in these places because they have an, an outer skin and an inner support panel for the strength for everything and we don't, as I say, we don't just cut things and butt join, it's a stagger join for the strength. But I think I'm just about through that one. <laughs> So I just decided instead of drilling these out, I hit them with a grinder, grind away this first skin, weaken it all, so then this will just give a bit of a gentle prise off and it should just crack off when I get rid of that outer skin, get enough material gone and hopefully that'll let go for me. Looks like a bit like a dog's breakfast at the moment. <laughs> 
see how that goes, that should have weakened it pretty well. Just want to be very careful on this one. It's going very slowly with this, so I don't want to knock it out of shape. But there you go, that's the last one I think. Now, what do we got here around this corner? Alright, so I've gone about this in a little bit of a different way to get this off, but I've already marked that and I've given it a little um, scribe and I've gone in there with a sharp cold chisel just to mark that, but it's followed that line, but I want to get that off. So basically, there's a couple of ways of doing it if you want to take things off. You can be spot well, gently take it all off carefully, and it'll come off without a mark on it basically. But when it's an old piece of junk like this, as you can see, I just wanted it off and gone. And the thing is, you can be a bit rough with the old piece. You can use it actually to work, if you like, to work with to get it off. But um, what you want to do is this part of the car that you're trying to save, don't damage it too much. You can, you know, you bruise it a little bit here and there, but not a lot. That'll just straighten up very easily, as you can see. But it's left, left a few little buttons right around that, where I've um, chiseled around those spot welds. So I've come up. Uh, and I've made my join across there, and here's this inner piece, which you've got to be very careful of not to cut into, which I haven't. I've just skimmed across the top of it here. And that's why I was with those spot welds here, as you've seen me grind off. I was very pedantic there. I'd rather destroy this piece and save this. So basically now, when I grind off those little buttons and bits of rubbish that are left there, this isn't interfered with whatsoever. And I've got, I'll have a nice join right across there, little stagger down the front of it, and in, in, in onto the car. But basically, what I've done is save everything around there that I need to save, haven't destroyed any of it. I'll clean it up, dolly it up, and that'll come up uh, really good. That, that seal will go onto it, but it hasn't affected it in any way. So when you go to cut things off like this, for instance, this outer skin, just have a good look at what you got. Don't dive in because you'll chop through that support and that's very important. You can see there where it comes down and it's been back in the day in the factory spotted onto that inner floor pan. That's all for strength for this door pillar. So like I said, when I clean these few little bits of dags off here and there, that'll dress up real good. But that's, um, that's a typical, uh, yeah, pretty shonk repair. As you can see, that's on there with pop rivets and it's basically bogged on. But that's gone, that's out of the way. But I'll have a look up inside that sill later on. But I don't think, just looking at this here, I'm gonna to have to go much further inside because what someone's done back in the day, they put like, like a rust proofing or a, um, an oil-based material in there by the look of that. And that's really underneath that, has really protected that quite well. So it's pointless me to go any further, even though I've got quite a good length of sill, it's a waste of time. So I'll just get, get rid of this mess here that I've got. That'll go in the bin. And once I say, like I dress all that up and sit that um, outer seal on, that should come up quite nicely. Yeah, that's a bit of quality, isn't it? Yeah, no, we won't even bother with that one. But that's a souvenir for Matt. He can put that on the wall if he likes. Well, you can look at it like this, Matt. That's a good little souvenir and a reminder of uh, what the little Tori was before she became a good thing again. Um, not, not the prettiest side, but um, yeah, mate, you can position that on the wall if you like. All right, so it's off. Um, so now any little bits of um, daggy bits or indiscretions I've got there, no big deal. I'll dress all that up, clean it all up, and you can come back um, and have a good look at that when it's all ready to go. But that's, um, that's just another way of doing it um, to get stuff done in a hurry. You can save a lot of time. And I just wanted to go that way to show you the other way if you want to do it like that. Um, that comes from a lot of experience, a lot of years when you're doing like major crash work. You just hook into the job, get it done. And it looks messy, it looks rough, but the panel that you're destroying is the one that's going in the bin. You can, can be rough with it and you can actually use it to work to your advantage to get it off. But what you're trying to do all the time is save what you've got there that you're gonna use. So like I say, it might look a little bit ugly the way it come off, 
but it hasn't really interfered or destroyed anything there. So I'll tidy all that up. You can come back and have a look when it's ready to go. But, um, and that's just another way to go when you want to get an outer panel off or a skin or whatever. Um, instead of drilling it all off and being pedantic with it, I could have done all that, no problem. But I just wanted to show you guys the other side of it all and you can go that way if you want. But be mindful, try and save what's there really, really, really well. I'm, I might have looked a little bit rough and ready the way I've done it, but I wanted to show you that side of it. But that's just another way to do it if you want to. And another thing too, hey Pops, if you get a really sharp chisel. Yeah. So that chisel was pretty average. Yeah, look, a little bit of a review on that thing. Um, it kind of done the job, it's off, but if you have a really, a really nice sharp chisel that, that really works, um, you'll get in on those spots and you'll hold it just in the right position and you get it right where you want it and just a good crack and you'll be amazed how they'll just come off. But I will say one thing, the spot welds on this were very good, they're very strong spots back in the day. That's um, been well put together, that thing. Yeah, they are strong, eh? The old yeah, welds. yeah. I found that too, they're really good, they've done them, I mean, they've built them very... Yeah, back in the day. So. Yeah, I found that too, Pops, they've, they've got a good spot weld. Yeah, excellent. And, and you know, they've got enough on there, they didn't miss it, that's for sure. There's a yeah. lot of spots along there. When yeah, you, they do, hey. There's, there's quite a lot. And you know, you've got some of these big, ugly, random ones here. And that's one of the reasons too, I didn't want to go drilling that because the way I went about it, like I say, I'm using that old panel as a guide. I can destroy that and save all this at the same time. Mm. But don't be, um, the, how would you say, don't be frightened to have a crack at it like that. But if you go that way, be careful of what you're trying to save. But when you're experienced and you've done a lot of it, like I said, you have the right tool, you can chop that off in five minutes. You get a quarter panel off. You get a little bit of, you know, this going on when you're doing it. You can't help it. It's only sheet metal. But um, once you clean it up, you dolly it up, dress it up, and it's quick and done. Like you drill away there all day. But um, this is a quicker way of doing it. So there you can see that that's cleaned up very nicely and you would have seen me hacking that off and it looked a little bit rough the way I was doing it but I wanted to go that way to show you guys another alternative of how to remove like an outer, this outer sill for instance and you can do that like on any panel like a quarter panel like a skirt and rail but when you're doing it you have to be very mindful what you're trying to save and, and what you don't really need to save but if you have a look there the way I've taken that 
and that's how it was the sill on there like that and you can see here it looks like it's fairly well butchered off it is to a degree but it's i've done it in a way that once i've done that and taken that away i've saved that i haven't destroyed anything that i've wanted to keep and basically up across this uh, end of the sill here where it's had spots in here i didn't drill anything out i've just ground them away and when you take it away you can see i've still got all the meat there so what i try to do is and it's a quicker way it's a, it's a good alternative but be very mindful doing it don't destroy what you want to keep but if you go this way and you get used to doing it which i've done a million gazillion removals over the years um, you can chop that off in 10 minutes as opposed to drilling everything and when you drill you don't want to drill too much because you'll then start to drill into your your inner skin the piece you're trying to save this way if you hack it off correctly or chop it off correctly to use a better term you'll leave your little buttons or your little spots to a degree then you grind it all the way and you've still got that full effect there right around where you want to weld back on and the other side of it is too when it's if you mig it back on you've got uh, no blow through the other side you can just buff this side down where you've welded and it'll come out good or you can go the other way and spot weld it on and gives you a really nice finish either either way but if you drill it out you're going to have obviously issues here that you might have to fill bits in but there are different situation scenarios on removal and refits in certain places on cars and a lot of times you can go this way to get it off for, for speed um, but other places you just can't it doesn't work you've got to drill off so there's a few different ways to go but i thought i'd just throw this in let you guys see that's another alternative i know it looks a little bit rough and ready coming off but that doesn't matter because that's rubbish now it's in the bin but the part that i want to preserve is all that and it's come up a treat it's there i'll weld that back on hasn't destroyed anything i've got my little stagger return here up around that sill for strength the new bit will go down through here go back on there and i'll run a nice seam weld down that i'll stagger that into where i need to be i haven't finished that little cut yet but i will and that's just another good alternative but as i say be mindful when you're doing this not to destroy that side of your panels but that might help you and i hope it does okay so that chisel what was your thoughts on it pops because i reckon it could be a bit better than that yeah no you're spot on out of 10 I'd give that probably about a six. Um, you can see there already where I've been hitting the, the edge of that, trying to use this side as the cutting side. It's already mushroomed it over just on that little job. Look, it's not the best of tools, but if you're only going to do little bits and pieces, probably mm. would work. Yeah, it's probably more for when you drill them off. Yeah. And you just chisel away that way. You've got to find little bits and pieces. But for full on removal like that, yeah. I'll just go back to my own stuff that I make myself. You want a quality piece of really hardened, real well tempered steel. Yeah. And you can belt into that. You can have that edge really nice and sharp, but not overly sharpened, where you can get them in between those skins, give it a good crack, and you'll just chop them off. Whereas opposed, using this, this is the effect that you kind of get with it. It sort of, it sort of chews them off. It doesn't really just chop them away. But I just thought I'd try that tool. Mick picked it up um, and we just thought we'd give it a go and see how good or not. But honestly, my opinion on that is about a six out of a 10. It will do a job for you, but might be fine with just little bits and pieces. But if you're on a full job, like for instance, if you wanted to rem remove the whole side of that car, I definitely wouldn't advise to go down that track. You can if you like, but I personally wouldn't. But the tools to do that properly, I have stuff that I make myself. But that's, um, yeah, the review on it, look, fine for little jobs, you can persevere, but I really, for big jobs, wouldn't use that. That's my opinion. Keep it real and keep it right. Catch you later.